Initialization. 3, 2, 1. Neural pathways on. Visual sensors on. Servo systems on. Isaac awoke. He sat in the cockpit of a transport ship he had borrowed from the directorate's facility. Stars twinkled from beyond the windshield. Wait, there are no stars in hyperspace, he thought. The ship suddenly shook for a moment, causing an alarm to trill. Isaac's hands flew across a keyboard, silencing the alarm. He flicked on the ship's sensors. Behind his transport sat a long and narrow space ship. A large bulbous sphere protruded from the center of the ship. Lights twinkled from the sphere's viewports. A series of orange markings adorned the sides of the ship. Isaac quickly identified them as symbols used by the Drazi Horde, a feared nomadic race. From the central sphere of the ship emanated an artificial gravitational force, it had yanked Isaac and his ship out of hyperspace. Isaac's transport was slowly being pulled backwards towards one of the other ship's hangars, by the ship's powerful array of tractor beams. Isaac revved the engines of his ship experimentally. The humming of the engines became more and more pronounced, reverberating through the transport. The ship slowly ground to a halt, counteracting the tractor beam. The ship suddenly began to shake, and another set of alarms began to trill. Resigned, Isaac killed the extra thrust to the engines. The alarms died down, and the transport once again resumed its movement towards the larger ship. Hangar Bay of the Cthulhu A thin blue pulsing energy field kept the hangar's atmosphere from disappearing into space. Several small, squat vehicles occupied the hangar. Hulking mechanical exosuits marched between the smaller ships, loading and offloading crates. Two formations of heavily armored soldiers marched into the hangar, their boots echoed as they stomped. The soldiers were clad head to toe in a set of matte gray armor plates with streaks of scarlet, crisscrossing the armor plates in an almost random looking pattern. The armor was complete except for around their eyes and mouths. A pair of cold reptilian eyes peered out from their helmets, and their mouths were twisted into a toothy grin. The soldiers were heavily armed, each carrying a large rifle on their shoulders. Some of the soldiers in the rows wore a set of brown armor instead. Unlike the other soldiers, the brown armored ones were of several different species. Some were shorter than others, some had more limbs than others, and others were thinner or wider than the others. Lieutenant Segulu raised an arm, the rows of soldiers stopped marching. Casting a glance at the oncoming spaceship which was being pulled into the hangar, Sigulu did another hand motion. The soldiers broke up into small groups and took up shelter behind several piles of crates. One team of soldiers began to prepare an autocannon on a tripod. One of the soldiers stepped over to Sigulu. So, why are we bringing in a ship without any life forms aboard? Growled the soldier. Sigulu sighed. Apparently the council landed some contract with the directorate. Fools lost some kind of battle robot. Hmm, capabilities. Unknown. No one survived the facility it escaped from. The facility was also destroyed, only a distress signal was transmitted. That's why we have the slaves here. Sigulu gestured to the brown armored soldiers. They'll go in first and hopefully we'll wear it down before we'll have to use any of our soldiers. The soldier bobbed his head in acknowledgement. With a loud pop, the ship popped through the energy field and entered the hangar. The ship hit the hangar floor and bounced slightly before reaching a stop. Units 1 through 5, move in, exclaimed the lieutenant. The slave soldiers moved in towards the ship. Reactor overload set. 5. The slaves reached the transport ship and raised a set of cutting tools to the hull of the ship. 4. Isaac powered up his weapons. 3. Lieutenant Segulu felt uneasy. He shook off the feeling he had led boarding parties dozens of times. A proper drowsy warrior feels no fear. 2. Isaac dropped to the floor of the cockpit and curled into a bowl. 1. 
Energy spike. Energy spy. Began to shout his soldier. Zero. The transport exploded. In an instant, the slave soldiers were incinerated and ripped to pieces. Drazi soldiers flew backwards as the blast hit them. Debris slammed into the walls of the hangar, gouging the walls. An alarm began to blare, and red emergency lights began to flash. With a groan, Lieutenant Segulu stood up. Other soldiers began to stand up. Move, 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 he shouted. He held his beam rifle up and began to approach the charred skeleton of the transport ship. Other soldiers began to move in too, carefully avoiding the worst of the flames. A yell suddenly filled the air. Sigulu twisted around towards the source. A pile of metal debris exploded upwards. Standing in the center of the flames and debris was a tall metallic man. Save for a few burn marks and dents, the robot's armor was pristine. Fire. The soldiers opened fire with their beam rifles. Wordlessly, the metal man charged one of the soldiers. The metal man easily picked up the soldier, hurling the screaming soldier off to the side. The metal man raised his arms up. Two slug thrower barrels emerged from his arms. He opened fire. Cursing, Sigulu dived to the metal deck of the hangar, firing as he dived. Flicking out his tongue, he flipped a small switch, turning on his helmet transmitter. We have an explosion. Repeat we have had an explosion, and are requesting reinforcements. We are engaging a robot of unknown capabilities. Easy, thought Isaac. Even though blasts from the beam rifles did impact against him and hurt him, nothing of any importance had been damaged. Isaac did have to admit though, that these drowsy warriors were far better trained and better armored. It took more than a single hit from his slug throwers to eliminate his targets. A sudden blast of energy suddenly impacted his right leg, nearly knocking Isaac to the ground. Spinning around, he saw the auto cannon which had been set up behind an improvised wall of crates. Isaac quickly prepped a grenade and fired it. The grenade exploded against the auto cannon's generator, incinerating the cannon's crew in a bright red explosion. Isaac's vision darkened for a moment to prevent the bright light from overpowering his visual sensors. The drowsy warriors however had no such thing. Isaac quickly marched over to the blinded warriors and executed them all. With a loud and sudden smash, Isaac was knocked across the hangar. He bounced against the decking, denting the deck in several places. Isaac immediately jumped up into a crouch and stared up at the source of the sudden attack. A 30-foot-tall gray slab of metal stared back at him. The exosuit was humanoid in shape, two legs and two arms. A central command pod sat into the exosuit's chest. Four thick fingers extended from the suit's hands. Isaac raised an arm up and fired at the exosuit's command pod. The driver of the suit responded by moving the suit's arms into a stance which vaguely looked like a martial arts stance. With a hiss of hydraulics, the exosuit plodded over towards Isaac. Isaac jumped to the left as the driver brought the suit's arms down to the ground. Isaac took shelter behind a small, squat spaceship. He ran a quick diagnostic test. Compiling. Right leg movement at 75%. Left leg movement at 98%. Ammunition reserves at 67%. Five grenades left. Just enough, thought Isaac. The exosuit plotted across hangar towards Isaac. Each step it took shook the deck as it charged. Author's account and link to original text is in the description.